Major Sullivan. <clears throat> Major Jackson. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Are you? Uh, I, had, is, I had my first virtual week. I know. This is very yeah. exciting. I had six workshops last week, so that was great. And what do you think? Well, you know, it's different. Uh, I've yeah. been jotting down some ways in which uh, you can approach it the same way you could live meetings. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of it is um, you have to take into consideration that <clears throat> the mainland, when you're in a mainland situation, um there's a lot of context provided simply by the space you're in and people's arrangement mm -hmm. in the space. And that's not available uh, when you're just looking at 24 boxes on the screen. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, now what some, adv some advantages and uh, yeah. uh, some areas where I do enjoy person to person. Conversation. Yeah, table ten. Uh, table ten would be heard this way. You know, I was just thinking, Dan. I was going to propose that we actually set aside and, and have a, uh, you know, bring your own omelet uh, table ten breakfast one day, just to uh, no, because I feel I'm, deficient. No, I'm that. totally for that. I'm totally for that. Okay, good. Because um, people are doing this, you know. I mean, there's virtual yeah. cocktail parties going on and uh i i totally i'm i'm totally up to that yeah i miss that a lot um, and then we'll tip so, uh, we'll tip each other yes perfect i like that <laughs> i'll have that a jar. Is so funny we'll have, we'll have a well, jar, you know what just table, for uh we'll have a table 10 jar and you have a table 10 jar i have a table 10 jar and at the end we'll stick cash in the jar i and, love it uh and then when the mainland possibility returns, we'll count up all the money in the jars, and that'll probably pay for the meal. Well, we should zoom. Uh, we'll, we'll zoom Olivier in just intermittently mm -hmm. to to add <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> to the conversation. Yeah, <clears throat> the authenticity of it. So, yeah. um, what are the different uh, size? groups that you've had virtually this week now so you've experienced one-on-ones -on -one, so you've experienced what's the largest um in sort of mid have you noticed anything about the different sizes well i don't really notice the difference in sizes because i don't see any more than i can see so on um, thursday we had a 51 we had 51 people but mm -hmm. I could only see 24, and uh, yeah. and Kathy Davis, who runs them for me, you know, um, she, um, you know, basically kept it fairly constant. And now they had yeah. it. Uh, apparently, everybody else has the feeling they're there with me and they can see me, but uh, I yeah. don't have that. Uh, I don't have that sensation. So. Mm -hmm. um, that's very, very interesting. Uh, but the thing I liked about uh, best about it were the breakout sessions. Where, yes, uh, I was going to say with, that. With... Go ahead. I was going to say the breakout sessions, like my observation of it now is the breakout sessions are actually, uh, I think, better in the this kind of format uh, mm -hmm. just because of the efficiency of getting the group, getting in the group. and the variety like where i find that in the um in the room you end up kind of defaulting to the people who are in the closest proximity to you as opposed to mm -hmm. like seeking out different voices or different people for mm -hmm. the group and so the randomness of the um thing actually adds something to it that you're gonna have a different um blend than you would normally than you would normally have and when you're actually in the breakout room if it's three or four people your that gallery view is actually quite um you know big that you can actually see the whites of somebody's eyes and the expressions on their face and it mm -hmm. feels like a very mm -hmm. 
you know, like you're really having that sort of more intimate conversation with them. Um, so yeah, yeah, and that, I find that, people are that, more, I find people are more focused and intentional on the virtual than they are in person. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think what you get is you get from from concentrate. You get the actual stuff with with less um, filler, I guess, or mm-hmm. whatever. The, mm-hmm. There's less inefficiency in it. Like you know, you're first of all, even just getting there, you're at home and you're you're uh, you turn it on and you're instantly there, which is mm-hmm. as good as teleporting, really. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the um, yeah, you're what I have noticed is I've been on ones up to 150 people um, now and on small ones. And the, the 25 is the most on one gallery view. So you could see mm-hmm. everybody there, even though it's sort of small, you can still see mm-hmm. and recognize mm-hmm. people. Um, but as you get smaller, like, you know, 12 and, uh, and eight are really like, that's a significantly, um, Mm. intimate, um, environment. Like we've done, I did our, uh, our free zone, uh, one of the free zone ones was, was Mm. a smaller group Mm. like that. It does feel very. Um, it does feel very intimate. I like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah a, c- a couple uh, just social behavior uh, that I noticed um, that um, <clears throat> one one of the workshops. Uh, I know there was somebody and they were walking around with their computer. Okay, uh, and it is the most obnoxious behavior. I mean, it instantly uh, just drives it. And not only yeah. Uh, walking around, but also eating in front of other people, you know, like right. putting putting stuff in his mouth and then checking computer off screen while doing right. it. So the person who runs the workshop can just black them out. And yes. uh, so, uh, so I said, from now on, anybody, I said, first of all, put out the ground rules that uh, yeah. stay still, stay still. Don't be in a moving car. Don't right. have a ceiling. Don't have a ceiling fan going right. in the, you know, in the background because yeah. people's eyes are immediately um, drawn to the anomaly. Yeah. Or anomaly. And but it, but the impression I got from this person is that they came to take something, but they didn't want to give something. I got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, they yeah. weren't going to follow the same rules. They weren't going to show up and be present. They weren't going to be concentrated. They were going. Yeah. Uh, they were going to take it. So I, I mean, I've seen that in, um, I've seen that in mainland workshops too, where people are yeah. up and they're answering their phone. But somehow it's not as jarring. Here, here it's yeah. very jarring. I, I, I think what we're going to see is this is going to, this is the beginning of the shift that everybody's yeah. very now becoming comfortable with virtual gathering. You're, it's it's absolutely fascinating to see how resilient as a society we are. That, oh, yeah. And the, and the creatives are rising. Except, to for the one, except for several sectors of the society who, right. are show, who are showing themselves not to be resilient at all. Right. Uh, yeah, so you're we can right. talk about We can talk about this as we go down the road. But uh, yeah. it's uh, it's very very interesting. There's one section of society that's really having a rough time with us. Yeah, yep. But the ones who oh, are but- embracing Cloudlandia are. I mean, you're starting to see it that there's every single late night talk show host is doing the show from home, and they're being creative, and they're they're using Zoom and bringing other, you know, bringing their guests into the show from their homes. And you're starting to see artists who would normally be out touring or playing live events now are Mm -hmm. bringing people to them. 
um, DJs like that. This is the whole thing, you know, DJs that would be touring around at nightclubs and stuff now are streaming sets live that this is really this uh, options, all these options that are Mm -hmm. sort of available for people now are driving the the capability of of people to receive these things i think it's going to be really interesting to see the bump up of the um the peripherals and all the stuff that goes into consuming and taking part in virtual gatherings like i could see where homes now are going to sort of become um, come equipped with sort of virtual gathering nooks, you know, where you can see it almost like off the off the family room or off the kitchen, a little cove where there's a green screen or it's a you know a prof not a professional but a permanent sort of uh, background for um, for you know Zoom meetings mm-hmm. and and things like that where that that i think is going to uh be a standard sort of household um feature and i think that this is really going to drive the home theater um or home digital consumption kind of um um tools too where as mm-hmm. the TVs, you know, the bigger screen TVs have cameras built in and, you know, micro peripheral kind of microphones in the remotes or however else that that is going to make it so much easier to consume virtual um, virtual Hmm. things. Yeah. Well, there's probably, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I think that this is basically uh, unpredictably individual. Uh, yeah. You know, my, my, my sense is some people will do that and some people will never do it again in their life uh, because uh-huh. uh, it hasn't been a pleasant experience. It's like uh, I was reading the history of the Blitz when the... British were being bombed by the Germans that basically lasted for, you know, the better part of six or seven months where they were getting bombed every night. And there's this whole underground life that developed in London because they have the subway uh, underneath. And then there were lots of abandoned parts of the subway because it had been uh, being constructed and assembled uh, assembled. Um, pretty well over about a 50, 60 year period. And there were sections of tunnels that were deemed not that important and they were abandoned. And, uh, and these became like nightclubs. These became like, mm-hmm. you know, people would discover these places. And the, uh, London has a lot of salt mines uh, underneath it, something that I discovered. And uh, they have miles and miles. And salt is an incredibly durable um, uh, once you expose salt to the open air, it uh, sort of becomes concrete. It's very oh wow, uh, well, yeah. Well, and yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it was very very interesting. But uh, people said, well, afterwards, you know, we're going to come down here, but nobody did. They they the the, the chance that they they had to go back to the, to above ground life, um, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, this is the moment they did. They went and they said, "I I don't want to go back there there again." So it was, right. uh, yeah, it was kind of related to danger. It was related to nervousness. It was related yeah. to anxiety. So I said, some people are adapting very nicely to this, but they do adapt with the idea, "Well, this is for a while, okay." And uh, as soon mm-hmm. as we go back to, um, you know, having freedom to mingle, freedom to congregate, uh, I'm going to go back there and do that. So I think it's kind of, uh, I wouldn't be buying stock uh, based on uh, predictions about how people are going to perform once they have the choice again. Mm-hmm. I wonder, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be um, 
It'll be interesting. I mean, you were big, you've been big. moving in this direction all your life, so that's this true. Is, yeah, this yeah. Is a speed up. This is just a speed up of uh, yeah a tendency uh, you were you were already yeah. doing, but um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of hard to say. Um, I'm noticing that the um, the box office movie um, uh, studios they just had the big release of. Uh, one of the animated, um, the Disney uh, Trolls uh, movie was released by uh, digitally um, and you could buy it instead of it going to the, the theaters for the big opening. Mm-hmm. They, mm-hmm. You, could, you could buy it on that weekend for uh, $20, $19.99 or whatever. Um, and mm-hmm. so some of the first release movies, the studios are getting a taste of that people are um, happy to uh, to buy that way. And mm-hmm. the studios get much more of the money because they don't have to split the money with the exhibitors, if yes. with, the, um, with the movie theaters. And so I wonder, you know, if that... I don't know, in a lot of cases, if that were an option for people, that you could see a big movie that you you really want to see on the day that it's released, and you could do it at home. It's, mm-hmm. it's, I don't know. It's, I think it's creating more uh, forced experimentation, let's say, I mm-hmm. guess, is what's mm-hmm. going on, you know? So, Yeah, I think... Uh, mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's not a area of life that's not being, um, uh, somehow, um, experimented with here, you know, um, right. you know, I, uh, for every weekend that I've been, you know, since we've been quarantined, I've taken a shopping trip down to Yorkville. So, uh, yeah, it's really interesting to walk, uh, Yorkville Avenue in Cumberland and, uh-huh. Nothing's happening. It's just nothing. You know, it's ten o'clock in the morning and nobody's out. Nobody's walking. Nothing. Right. And, uh, and it's you know, for those of you who don't know Toronto, this is the fashion district. You know, this is where the cafes are. This is, you know, yeah. I mean, this is the shopping, the shopping center of Toronto, and it's just nobody out. Well, one. Novel, it's a restaurant, but they've created a three minute pizza. And uh, oh, really? So, yeah, so they have a, a screen up so that you can come up to the screen. It's on the sidewalk. So you walk right up to the screen and you push a push yeah. button and somebody comes on. And I don't know where this person is. You know, the person may be there, right. may be uh, so, somewhere else. And uh, <clears throat> there's a um, little, uh, you know, Kind of an ATM slot where you put in okay. your credit card and you press in how many pizzas you want and uh, you press it in. They give you a variety and everything else. And then there's a slot. And, you know, I was watching one person do it. And, you know, I looked at my watch when it seemed that the transa- the order was put in. And three months yeah. later, uh, out comes a box uh, with a pizza. Where was this slot? Uh, right on, uh, right on Bay Street, just above um, uh, Yon Street. Uh, okay. Actually, uh, would have been between Cumberland and Yorkville, but it was on okay. the east side of Bay Street. You know where Pussateries is. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it was right across the street because I was waiting in line to get into Pussateries. Uh, okay. Well, there waiting. you go. And I was so you're feet. watching it all happen. Right, right. Yeah, I was watching what, what was happening. And uh, then some shouter, a guy who was a shouter, came down the street on the other side. And he said, hey, hey, you're five feet. You're five feet. Get six feet. Six, you too. <laughs> <laughs> so he's the supervisor. He's appointed himself as the social distancing supervisor. You know, this, this, complete, this is complete. the police. Yes. The SDP, completely voluntary. This is completely yeah. voluntary. Completely voluntary. He's not being paid to do this and yeah. anything else. But he's uh, he's insisting on social conformity. You know, he's uh, ah, uh, and he was shouting. He was shouting that some people hey, were. Hey, yeah. hey, 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 you two there, 
separate, separate. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> anyway, so it's a lot of, I mean, as, just as, you know, dropping back and just looking at it as, uh, uh, you know, just a marvelous social experiment that we're getting to experience here. And mm-hmm. then I went to Whole Foods. I went to Pussetary. So I was on the sidewalk for 20 minutes at Pussetary's before they, then they let a rush of you in. So they, they must have some, <clears throat> you know, uh, measurement inside. Of, yeah, you can only have this many they, people, and right. Then, mm-hmm. then they let 10 more in. I was in a, a 10. I had to oh, remember no. to dress a little bit more warmly next time because it was, oh, a, right. a, yeah, it was a bit chilly. And then I went to um, I went to Whole Foods, which is inside, you know, the, the mall, yeah. mm-hmm. in the Hazleton uh, shopping center there. and. Uh, I looked at my watch and it was 27 minutes before I got a that line got me in 27 minutes. Wow. And, uh, but I said, you know, uh, people's estimating skills of what constitutes six feet is probably taking a jump right now. Society wise, mm-hmm. we're, we're getting a sense. We, we know what six feet is, you know, but yeah. it was kind of interesting how, um, I don't know if this is a Canadian trait or a Toronto trait, but, Everybody kind of um, cool with it, you know, kind of placid. Um, I wonder you know, what's um, no I wonder what's happening up. at my uh, my Toronto home there at the Hazelton. How that? Oh, it's oh, it's you know, it's dark inside. You know, I don't know if uh, you know. I'm sure there are people still, you know, mm-hmm. checking in, and I'm sure they have rooms and. You know, and everything yeah. else. They just have some rules, you know. Yeah, I yeah. bet. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, Very uh, interesting. The, re- the restaurants are closed. You know. They, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. but uh, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm just sitting here, and I uh, saying, not in my entire life has there been um, an event where everybody's experiencing the same thing, same general set of conditions. Yeah, uh, probably half the population on the planet, you know, is yeah. kind of in this experience. They're walking the around in this experience. Unifier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's, yeah, you think about that as, like, I was thinking back, like, all the way, I, I can't even recall hearing anything historically even like this how do now, you even ration, rally ration, something yeah, like rationing that yeah. during rationing during the second world war and mm-hmm. uh you know and uh you know lots of different things and uh, in the united states with no need for it whatsoever there was absolutely no need for rationing whatsoever the u.s just had so much that they're but they did it for um solidarity between the fighting population and the you know the home population yeah that, that, that and it was psychological and sociological it wasn't there was no need for the rationing whatsoever gasoline you know everything uh, food everything there was no need the u.s could produce more than mm-hmm. enough both for the war effort and also for the you know, the population back home, but they, inst- yeah. they made it seem as if everybody was going to sacrifice, but that was for political, psychological, emotional reasons. It wasn't for physical mm-hmm. reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I watched, um, we watched Groundhog Day the other day. Oh yeah. Oh, I love as, Groundhog as a, Day. Yeah. yeah just a, as a fun thing, because it struck me that this is the gift that we've been given in this right now is this, you know, day after day of Groundhog Day that you Mm -hmm. have the opportunity to kind of develop the new, um, you know, craft your day exactly the way, the way that you would want it. And Mm -hmm. you you still get your, um, you still get your 100 Jacksonian units every day and it's amazing how you know there's so much um 
you know, you're getting the more than the you're, you're getting more than the usual amount, actually. Uh, tell me, how do you mean? I mean, not quantitatively. Oh. You only have, have quantitatively, but uh, yeah, you're not you're not being beckoned out into the mainland. That's world. what I mean. You're so in, yeah. yeah. There's all the inefficiencies of it. The 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 moving about between places and um, all that stuff. Yeah. Is yeah, it's really yeah, it's really really interesting. Uh, but I find uh, uh, unless I have scheduled, uh, uh, you know, Zoom, yeah, uh, um, uh, I am really not conducting my life any more any differently than if I right. had actual actual meetings. But uh, yeah, um, I'm I'm in two minds about. Uh, you know whether uh, efficiency. If you're talking about pure work efficiency, probably I'm more efficient. But um, uh, picking up on things, I don't know if I'm any more efficient during this time. You know, I mean, a lot. Both of us are kind of intuitive, and, yeah. Uh, and I find uh, uh, I'm more in touch with certain aspects of my work and I'm less uh, in touch with the teamwork that's actually going into, um, mm. I, I don't know what people are doing, you know, I mean, right. I'm, I'm, I'm like ordering the pizza. I don't know if the person yeah. is actually there, is there you know, <laughs> the, transactions, gotcha. the transactions are easier, but uh, uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, I haven't been uncomfortable with it at all because it's, it's right. new and it's kind of novel. So, all um, my find spidey your, sense of my, mm-hmm. do you, are you um, <laughs> excuse me? Are you waking up and <clears throat> going to bed at the same time mm-hmm. as usual? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So your uh, routine like that hasn't changed. No, and it's still the same exercise routine in the morning. You know, yeah. I mean, I've got a set pattern, and I dare not break it. You know, I mean, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm into habits, good habits or bad habits. You're right, exactly. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, that your new uh, that new thing. But I wondered if you would get uh, more sleep or more or uh, anything would change. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think we're more regular. I think uh, yeah. uh, because we don't have events out, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of things that just in, uh, aren't in our life here at all. And uh, we're using the cottage house for the workspace. So anytime I uh, I have a work work project, I go over to the other house. And yeah. um and that's nice. I mean, that's been great. Yeah. Because you get the separation and, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, really interesting. And, uh, my sense, uh, because I've, um, been studying this from a political standpoint, that this is speeding up the U.S. Decoup- decoupling with the world. I think that the U.S. is in a, um, quite a long period now, but it's speeding up now where um, <clears throat> we took on all sorts of, I'm talking as an American here, and I'm talking yeah. to, to you as an American here, that we took on all sorts of responsibilities and obligations as a country uh, following the Second World War. And these got a these got kind of fixed as global habits that the U.S. Navy would always be patrolling all the trade wor- uh, trade routes in the world. It would be protecting all the energy sources in the world. Uh, yeah. It would be it would be sending in police forces and SWAT teams and special ops to you know to keep a uh, dangerous situation from getting out of hand. And uh, and but that was to keep the Russians from taking over the world. I mean, the original response, it was to rebuild a world that had been flattened by the Second World War. And then it was to keep the Soviets from taking over the world. And um, and first of all, the the parts of the world that were destroyed rebuilt themselves. But the habits went right on and then the Russians gave up, the Soviets gave up and the habits went right on. 
And everybody considered, well, the Americans are always going to pay for this. They're always going to be out there protecting us. They're always going to be guaranteeing us this and that. And uh, then one day somebody came along and asked the Americans whether they wanted to act. A president came along and said, ah, do you want to keep doing this? I thought so. I, I didn't think you wanted to keep doing this. And that was Mr. Trump. And that's why mm -hmm. the hatred, the hatred of Mr. Trump, I think, um, <clears throat> is that he's asking a question that should never have been asked. Of course, we'll go on with uh, because there are whole fortunes, there's whole careers, there's whole, um, you know, life is easy um, aspects. And I think that what has happened is that a biological factor came in there with the virus and um that wasn't really, really part of anybody's notion of uh, how we should be protected. And all of a sudden, uh, there's nobody's responsibility to actually deal with this. I mean, the World Health Organization is just, a, you know, is just a, you know, a, a, you know, it's hopelessly political and it's hopelessly corrupt and compromised, like all those institutions are and uh, they've proven to be virtually worthless they didn't give any warning and uh, so my my sense is that there's a bigger thing much much bigger thing that's happening and the virus is just a symptom of bigger things falling apart i don't think that this is the cause of things falling apart i think it's a symptom that a lot of things have been falling apart and this has speeded up the process that's, that's my this is an accelerator of it, yeah. Yeah, it's an accelerator. And Peter Zion, who wrote the book, uh, yeah. Apps and Superpower, and then he's got a new book out called This United Nations. Joe, our friend Joe, had him as a guest speaker at um, mm -hmm. Genius, Genius at the end of um, Genius Network at the end of February. And I got a chance to spend about three or four hours with him. You know, just chatting with him personally. Yeah. And I said, and I said, is this the cause of something? He said, no, no, no. He said, this is just a, man. he said, uh, this is a symptom. Um, he says, like, you haven't been paying your credit card bills and you get sick. <laughs> mm. yeah. He says, a lot of people haven't been paying their credit cards, you know, on nationwide basis. They haven't been. They haven't been paying their bills. And so he said that uh, this is just something that happened off to the side that reminds people that uh, um, the world is about to. Um, all the pieces are going back in the Monopoly box. There's going to be a new Monopoly game after this. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's how I'm looking at it. And uh, so, you know. Uh, and my my sense is, is that in the 10, 15 years from now, this will be seen as a very, very small event. I think so, too. Like, I already look at it. It's been a month right now that the fast, how fast it actually goes by. When I pointed out to someone that it's been yesterday was the fourth or today, actually, it's the end of the fourth week yeah. of this yeah. that, you know, it's you blink and it's over you know i think that's really the the thing yeah and i can see already the shifting in the u.s political scene because trump is mm -hmm. going to get ahead of this and he's going to say i'm the president who's going to bring the economy back and he's going to be pushing all the doctors and all i mean they more or less put the medical people in charge for the past month and uh, none of their predictions are coming true. So they were predicting that we'd be at a hundred thousand dead by now, and uh, you know it's you know in the U.S. it's maybe twenty thousand, twenty twenty five thousand. So uh, when people make predictions like that, they don't happen, then they lose credibility. And then you know there's states. That, well, do you think you though know, that they, in fairness, they were predicting that if we don't do something but everybody's done something and that's probably the um why we're not at a hundred thousand or do you think they were throwing that out as a cautionary projection 
No, I'm just said their time on yeah. stage is over. Their time. Oh, on I see stage what you're saying. Over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we don't want to hear that anymore. We don't want to. I mean, they're they're still out there. There was a guy introduced. He says, "Well, if we let up at all, if we're going to go to a million. And uh, I could tell that, uh, you know, that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, because you've heard 50 people say that over the last, or read about 50 people saying that. Right. And right. So there's a new saying. Um, um, you know, what I like to do. Uh, people say, "Nah, I'd ra- I'd rather go." You know, you know, if we go back to work and bring the economy back, and let's say it costs us a hundred thousand people to do that, probably worth it. Wow. Yeah, that's the way people are going now. That's true, isn't it? Well, yeah. the other thing is that uh, some of the cities and some of the states have been fudging their numbers. I mean, everybody, you know, nobody gives up their self-advantage during a crisis like this. I mean, you still have your notion what your self-advantage. But there were places that were reporting every death as a uh, COVID death, you know. Right. Well, mm-hmm. well, during normal times, people are dying all the time. You know, so mm-hmm. so my mm-hmm. sense is that we probably passed the, uh, you know, the watershed where I think all the emphasis is going to be now on how do we how do we get people back to work? Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. That is true. It's going to. I mean, it's an amazing thing. How is your um, the I know you you were mentioning that you made a decision for strategic coach that this was going to be a leap, and we've been talking about uh, that. How how has it been organizationally? Like how's the uh, the measures that you you guys have been putting in place? Yeah, well, uh, I um, I'm I'm a bit flying blind here because we. Um, um, you know, uh, I haven't really been part of the general team discussions uh, gotcha. about this. You know, I've yeah. been pumping out podcasts. I've been yeah. do, doing my version of, you know, I, I've been doing my. Yeah, it hasn't work, slowed you down it, at all. Right. No, right. No. But from a standpoint of what this all means afterwards, uh, you know, um I think we'll have to wait until the all clear signal goes out. Um, yeah, before I know what this. But um, you know, I I do know there's all sorts of experiments we're going to be doing, long range experiments. Um, yeah. Not not the UK, not the United States, not Canada, but you know, I would take a look at Australia. maybe India, India, probably India. Yeah. And um, Australia would be a good. Yeah, uh, Australia, Austra- Australia, New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Austra- Australia, South America. Uh, yeah, you know. Um, <clears throat> um, and um, you know, some parts of the Middle East. Um, uh huh. Um, and um, Eastern Europe, that area. Yeah. Um, uh huh. And everything where you'd have some form of the workshop, you'd have some form of the workshop. It wouldn't yeah. be wouldn't be the real workshop, but we could pick and choose. You know, you could put right. together, you could put together, um, you know, a gourmet <laughs> a gourmet course, and uh, you know, yeah. and then you know, and then start experiment that it's a you know it's a money making money making activity, and uh, yeah. you know, how does that work? You know, what's the encryption look like? You know, there's encryption two ways. There's uh, other people's information, and then there's your intellectual property. And mm-hmm. how does that work? And uh, how do you get paid for your three minute pizzas? Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Because they're physical goods. That's right. How do you turn that into three minutes? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have my. And, uh, and here, this is something, Dean, that I wouldn't have thought about happening before five years from now. And it might be, might happen this year. What's that? No, I mean what I've just oh, talked you mean, about. Oh, these you're, experimentation. Oh, yeah, these yeah. Experiment- I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Maybe we would do this. Uh, yeah. You know, five years from now, within the next yeah. five years. But but this well, certainly you have a whole up. new capability now. 
yeah, you, you yeah. certainly, you personally have a new capability called, you know, comfortable with virtual workshops. How'd they come across, That's, by the way? How'd they come they're across? Great. They, they're yeah. so great. I mean, it's the whole thing is like, you know, you're, um, you know, you're there, you, um, you know, you're communicating exactly the way that you would with in the mm -hmm. room, um, you know, being able to um, show your screen um, for mm -hmm. everybody to draw your models. And, you know, I don't know, I don't know whether you, uh, you know, with an iPad, you could do that same thing where you actually draw as you're, uh, yeah. As you're talking you just that's one more capability kind of thing um but that's a that's possible and here's uh, um, uh can i interrupt you here and then we'll come yeah. back you, is there any site where you can go where it's sort of cutting edge zoom in other words that there's all sorts of people doing really neat things with zoom that are kind of innovations, and I just wondered if there, there there's a site here because you know they've gone from 10 million to 200 million in a month. Right, and, right. Uh, I got to believe there's all sorts of uh, innovation and experimentation on on how you slice and dice different kinds of uh, meetings. Well, I think that you're starting. Yeah, yeah. I, that's a good thing. That it might be an be on the lookout for that because I'll, I'll be on the lookout and if you be on the lookout, we'll share information yeah. on that. But I got to believe there's an enormous amount of the innovation going on uh, oh. with this amount of activity. Well, watch what I'm going to do, Dan. Right now, while we're talking, I'm going to get my text out. I'm going to go to Magic, and I'm going to say, "Dear Magic." Hello, Magic. Would you please, would you please spend one hour and research to find any articles or websites featuring people using Zoom or virtual gathering in unique or novel ways. And send me links to the articles. Links and brief description. Thank you. I approve this message. So there's how this is going to happen here, Dan. You see, yeah, this is the... You just proved the validity of our podcast series here. <laughs> That's exactly right. The I knew if I just I knew if I just procrastinated on this project <laughs> long enough, and I talked about it, that some who would uh, take it off my hands, and you just did that. Mm. And for everybody wondering what just happened there, I uh, use a service called Get Magic. And uh, they are a, I call it like, uh, remember on the Flintstones, how Gazoo used to like, <laughs> you could summon him and ask things. So that's what I look at, that these. Uh, or on Star like Trek, uh, so. uh, uh, on Star Trek, uh, he, uh, Captain Picard says, computer. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what it's like. So I, yeah. uh, I text them and then they text, uh, they virtually jump on it and um yep. and you gave them an, uh, an hour's worth of funds to do this yeah i think in an hour yeah yeah so i spend you know 35 or 40 dollars or whatever it is an hour 
and to have, you know, probably a, um, you know, we'll see, but we'll get some unique, uh, interesting things that people are using Zoom for. Yeah. And that's yeah. great. They don't, I was like it as like the preliminary thing. Like they're not doing anything that I couldn't do myself, but I'm, I'm, I'd rather trade I'd rather trade forty dollars to have that one hour yeah, head well, start here's than spend the, the hour here's myself. The inter- yeah, here's the interesting thing is if someone sent me the instructions on how to do this, you know, what you just did, mm-hmm. I still wouldn't do it. Right. Because I gotta believe that they receiving the your request are incredibly better at carrying that out than either of us are. Yeah. And this is the thing. So I said, uh, so they just texted me back and said, on it, exclamation mark. I'm researching for any articles or websites featuring people using Zoom or other ways on how they gather or connect. Isn't that great? (laughs) Yeah. This is what the human brain was created for, you know. Yeah. I mean, that's so great. To make its Uh, intentions known to other human brains. That's right. Yep. I'll be sure to include yeah. links and brief description and cap the task to one hour. I'll get back to you with an update by 1 p.m. EDT. Isn't that great? So Isn't that great? It's great. We're living in amazing times, Dan. I mean, and I could, this is the thing about Get Magic is that I could, I could say anything and you have somebody bring me a green smoothie, you know, or whatever it is. And they will just make your desire happen. Or a three minute pizza. Send me, that's right. Go to Toronto, get me a three minute pizza and then ship it on down. They would definitely (laughs) do that. I mean, yeah. 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 But it was very, very neat. I wonder, uh, you know, I was looking at it because they had a whole frame of their window, Uh, you know, it was about, eight feet wide, uh, as high as a store window, where um, their site was actually advertised, three-minute pizza, you know, and then it had, uh, had, uh, you know, the screen implanted, and then the slot and the, um, you know, credit card mechanism in that. And I'm just wondering if they they were like a pop-up place all over the city. Um, right now, like this seemed yeah. really professional. This seemed really professional. I mean, this wasn't, uh, this wasn't, um, you know, somebody just deciding to do something with an empty store or something like this. This, this looked like it got, it was installed. And I'm, I'm wondering if they just didn't take advantage, um, of high traffic areas throughout the city of Toronto. And there's probably lots of empty space. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, that they just put these in, you know, and, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you know, and they've got some sort of refri- refrigerator, freezer, microwave situation in the space. Yeah. Uh, well, you think I, you know, we're, we're kind of it's like a little ghost kitchen. It's like a little ghost kitchen. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I think about it now as like. Uh, you know, Subway pizza or something, if you could, like, one stop before you get off, you can trigger a pizza to be ready for you as you get off at the next uh, the next exit. Yeah. Yeah. That could yeah. be, yeah. yeah. Very funny. Yeah, so no, no, I'm, it's $3. Yeah. The three dollars. No, I no, I don't. No, it's three minutes. I don't know. Three minutes. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, three three minutes. I mean, you don't care. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, you don't care. Yeah, I mean, it's so great. I love it. This is. I mean, uh, if it's if it's five dollars more, uh, probably I don't care. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this and, all uh, fits. This all definitely fits under the the jet stream of convenience you know that's really yeah. where this is all like amplifying that underlying well, jet it, stream but i think that, that the other thing is that there's uh there's a certainty to it you know 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of different parts of my life are uncertain, but these people mm-hmm. are just taking care of certainty, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, and uh, it's really, really great. And uh, uh, I just, uh, hu- humans are just really, really, really good at uh, not allowing voids to exist like if there's a void uh, mm-hmm. i mean like the hollywood studios while well, people aren't going to the movie theaters well let's just ramp up live stream you know you know and uh it's kind of funny the globe theater in london you know which is the original you know the uh, replica of the original globe theater down to how it was actually built they actually discovered the plans about mm-hmm. 40 40, 50 years ago, somebody had actually got the, you know, the builders' lines from the 1600s. And they, where is this? Uh, uh, where it's is on, this? It's probably it's um, um, you. Um, you were talking about staying at the Four Seasons at Canary Wharf. Uh, no, I say at the Four Seasons at uh, Tower Bridge. So okay, you're tell right great. across. So this is right across this the Thames. Is, yeah. Yeah, so this is back a little ways. It's more at the level of uh, uh do you know where the strand is? Um yeah. you know, there's mm-hmm. a, a street called the Strand. So there's Yeah. And you have uh, and then you have some footbridges. Well, it's the uh where the uh, um Tate Modern Muse- uh, Art Gallery is. It's on the mm-hmm. south side. And it's about two blocks from the Tate Modern Gallery in London. And uh, they've actually built, uh, you know, the complete theater. It looks like the 1600 right. theater. And it's outdoors. It's outdoors. So, And there's no seats because they didn't have seats in those days. Uh, well, they do up in the galleries where the aristocrats and the wealthy actually. But, well, so it's uh, all standing but, so people stand to watch. Is that the... Oh yeah, yeah. It's an old, it's a theater in the round, so yeah. the people are surrounding the theater, and they do it the way that they did it. You know, they dress on stage. You know, they put their costumes on, yeah. uh, right. and there's no there's no curtain or anything. Right, and, right, right. You know, and everything like that. But they filmed all these. They filmed all wow. these sessions, and uh, they have the live the original. Um, films and the globe is just live streaming these performances, you know, of Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. And, and, mm-hmm. and you know, the actor, uh, I think his name is Mark Rylance. Rylance, he won the Academy Award uh, for uh, two or three years back for um, um, trying to think. Hmm. How do you spell his name? R R Y L A N C E last. Okay. Uh, and I think he won it for the Hawking. Um, Stephen Hawking. He was Stephen Hawking. Um, okay. And, uh, and, yeah. Uh, and anyway, I think it's Mark Rylance, but he's the really, really the uh, the most flexible, great actor. He plays women. He plays men. He plays this. He plays that. He's just one of these. Uh, you wouldn't if he sat down next to you. Uh, you wouldn't know him. He's just one of those. He's like um, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Ormand. Uh, Ormand, uh, the actor Ormand. Uh, he won the Academy Award for Winston Churchill. But he just okay, yeah, yeah. He just he's one of these actors that just kind of disappears in the role. And you 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 say, well, what's he look like? And he said, gee, I don't know what he looks like. You know. And he's yeah, that's strictly, one of those things. Those that's those actors that disappear into something, and then you really don't Alec know. Guinness was what they Guinness. actually look like. Christian yeah. Bale, I would put in that same Christian kind of Bale, category. yeah, totally, to, totally, yeah. yeah, yeah. You you say what's he actually look like? And I say, right, yeah, yeah, yeah what, exactly. Uh, yeah, I don't know what he actually looks like. Uh, what's that? Uh, the actor's name Gary Orman. Uh, Gary. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you say, well, what's he been in? Well, he's in that. Gee, I don't remember which character he was because he just disappears, these actors, which I think probably is um, 
probably a pure actor. A pure actor can just become something else, you know, and they're, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's not like Julie Roberts, you know, what Julie Roberts, right. Julie Roberts played Julie Roberts, you know, that's Julie exactly Roberts. right. Yeah. yeah. She, she, uh, George, yeah, uh, Michael Clooney. Douglas. Played. George Clooney. Michael Douglas. Douglas. George, yes. George. Well, I think he played the role of George Clooney, George Clooney in this George Clooney in that, you know, and I, yeah, it's right. like Marilyn Monroe. What did Marilyn Monroe play? Well, she played Marilyn Monroe in this movie right. and Marilyn Monroe in that, you know, and everything. So they're they're kind of stars, but these are actors. And uh, anyway, yeah. Anyway, uh, re- really interesting. But uh, you know, they have this backlog of uh, twenty five years of doing performances, and they're all on film and really well filmed. I mean, really. First class What's the picture. name of this? If you were going to, is it on the globe? That'd be the globe theater. Oh, it's called the globe. Okay. The globe, globe theater. Um, um, you know, I'm going to look for the documentary or whatever. The, mm. Yeah. But that all the plays, uh, the, the great yeah. one, we saw him in New York. So in New York during the winter time, um, they go on the road and they take over a Broadway theater and they make it look like the globe theater. So when you walk yeah. in, it looks like the Globe Theater. And we saw a 12th night there. And, uh, uh, gee, the actor, and we were, you know, we were 10 feet from him. We were we were front row. And uh, they spit a lot. you got to watch yourself in the front row. <laughs> Wear your poncho and your, uh, yeah. your, yeah. your speed yeah. guard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But they're, you know, they're right there. But just what an amazing amazing actor you know i mean uh, and you could understand every word this is mm-hmm. you know this is 400 year old english and you could understand every word he just had this phenomenal ability to yeah you know, but unique ability yes 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 amazing well what have we co- I, what have we covered what have we covered in this episode i, I think, think uh, yeah I think that this is, uh, you know, our adaptability here. I think the mm-hmm. that's really the the essence of what we've been talking about is that's we're in this forced adaptability period. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked up. I mentioned to you convenience as the undergirding of what's going on, and it just dawned on me that I had never really looked up the the definition of convenience. And uh, the number one definition is the state of being able to proceed with something with little effort or difficulty. Mm. And that's something, um, Uh, another one is the quality. I think think you got that one in either um, senior kindergarten or first grade, Dean. I think you had, I think you... um, you didn't know that you were supposed to master a particular topic in those days, but I think you mastered right. that topic. Yeah, and you were uh, you were um, you were given less than great car- um, less than great grades because you right. had mastered this early. They tried, to, and that's, they tried to beat it out of me. Yeah, yeah, but a thing that contributes to an easy and effortless way of life. <laughs> the quality uh, voicemail was seen as one of the desktop conveniences of the electronic office, but that yeah. was the uh, the quality of being useful, easy, or suitable for someone. Yeah, this yeah, is. Uh, yeah. I mean, convenience is really convenience. I realize that now convenience is a good thing to have hung hung my hat on. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's really where, what I have, uh, that's the undergirding of everything of the 90 minute book and of the yep. dial talk done and the nine word email, all that stuff. Exactly. Yep. Convenience. I like it. Okay, Dan. Well, I think, well, um, uh, I will tell you this. I think that if people, uh, if I were to, interrogate people two weeks from now. And I said, did you hear that um, podcast that I did with Major Jackson? Um, you know, and we were, it was the week following when I first did my 
said, oh, is that the one where he made the call to get magic? And that's all they'll remember from this past hour is you well, taking out and p- uh, putting putting out there. So um, we'll report on our findings um, on the next. Episode. If you do. Uh, yeah. We got a cliffhanger. Uh, yeah. Well, I will tell you this, that uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel is in the offering here. Dayton. Oh, my goodness. That Field sounds very position. exciting. Field okay, position. yeah. yeah right, position. right, right. But uh, Lieutenant Colonel is the is the next rank up from Major. Woo! I like it. Yep. I'll go out and uh, do battle here and, and earn it. Yeah. Let's see what anyway, they find. I'm I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to find this interesting. This your, the findings that Get Magic gives for you may introduce. Of course, I'll new, forward you whole, whole, directly. Whole new podcast. Whole new podcast. Yes, I'll forward you directly. All righty. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Okay, and um, I'll um, do the setup for a table ten. Um, I like that. Um, um, what? And uh, so one of your assignments, you have to get a tip jar. Um, okay, I will do that. Yeah. I'll do it. Perfect. All right. Have, have a great day. Okay, bye.